In this module, we're talking about electron affinity and atomic radius. We'll also look at the trends of these properties in the, in the periodic table. So first, a definition. What is electron affinity? It's just a change in energy when you add an electron to a gaseous atom. And, you know, to be correct, we say we take it from infinitely far away. So there's no in interaction before we start. So, for example, we could write a, a, an equation that looks like this. We take a, a single oxygen atom, neutral, add an electron to it from infinitely far away, and we get O minus with a negative charge. The change in energy associated with this process is the electron affinity of oxygen. Now, electron affinity can be either negative or positive. Okay? Now, that's as opposed to ionization energies. Ionization energies are always positive. You always have to put energy in to pull an electron away from an atom. But an electron affinity can be not negative or positive. If, when you add that electron, it results in a lower energy, then it's negative, the electron affinity is. On the other hand, if it results in a higher energy, which is certainly possible, then the electron affinity for that species is positive. Um, these are the electron affinities graphed uh, for some of the first elements in the periodic table. Um, hydrogen, notice helium's not here because helium, it ends up, has a positive electron affinity. You have to force it to take that electron if you can. Um, Lithium back down here, beryllium again, positive electron affinity. Boron, carbon. Notice nitrogen also has a positive electron affinity, and, and so forth. Um, there's a general trend. It's not nearly as distinct as it is for um, ionization, first ionization energies. But in general, we can say that electron affinity increases as you go across, becomes more negative, excuse me. It it, more energy is released. An electron affinity is more negative as you go to the right in a period of the periodic table. And to a smaller extent, it becomes more negative as you go up a column. More energy is released as you go up. And we can explain this generally in terms of effective nuclear charge. The greater the effective nuclear charge, the more energy that there's going to be released when you bring that negatively charged electron up to the positive charge from the nucleus. Um, we'll look at that. Now, okay, so nitrogen has a positive electron affinity. Let's, let's try to explain that. Um, on the other hand, oxygen has a negative electron affinity. So we can say that the N minus does not form, that ion doesn't, but O minus does. If we look at electron configurations, we can use them to explain this. So nitrogen, neutral nitrogen in its ground state, has the electron configuration helium 2s2, 2p3. Make sure that makes sense to you. When we add an electron, which is what we do with electron affinity, we get the nitrogen minus one anion, and its electron configuration is helium 2s2, 2p4. Now, a couple things are going on here. First, if you note, nitrogen in its ground state, neutral nitrogen, has a half full 2p subshell. Remember, there's a little extra stability associated with that. By adding this extra electron, we break that stability, so it makes it a little harder to do. In addition to breaking up the half full subshell by trying to make this, this ion, we also have to overcome the um, repulsion of having two electrons in the same orbital. Remember, 2p, there's two or, excuse me, there's three orbitals. If it's 2p3, Hund's rule tells us that it looks like that. To make it 2p4, we have to add that extra electron into one of these orbitals. So now we have two electrons repelling each other. We can do it, but it's a little bit harder, and that, combined with breaking up the half-full subshell, makes it true that um, nitrogen has a positive electron affinity. On the other hand, for oxygen, when we start out in the ground state of neutral oxygen, it has neither full nor half-full subshell, and we don't change that by adding the electron. On the other hand, we, um, because oxygen is to the right of nitrogen in the periodic table, we know that oxygen has a greater effective nuclear charge. More positive charge is effectively felt by these electrons, which makes the change in energy associated with this process just enough negative to where it happens. Now, if we look at what happens up and down the column, the halogens, um, in general, so this is, these are the electron affinities for fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine go, going down the column. Except for fluorine, 
um, it gets more negative, the electron affinity gets more negative as you go up the column because we know the effect of nuclear charge increases as you go up the column. But fluorine's different. Um, that's basically because the fluorine atom is, is a pretty small thing, you know, compared to other atoms. And that electron that we're adding to fluorine is going into a 2p subshell. The, the, the volume at the 2p sublevel is so much smaller than 3p or 4p or 5p that there's a much greater repulsion because the electrons have to be closer together. And that extra repulsion gives us this little um, difference in the trend. It may, still a negative electron affinity, but not as negative as um, we'd expect. We'd expect it, to, you know, based on effective nuclear charge, to have a greater electron, uh, more negative electron affinity than chlorine. We, there's a relationship between electron affinity and ionization energy, but you have to be careful. It really helps down to write down the equations that you're talking about. So it looks like this. Um, the electron affinity of, for example, of the calcium plus two ion, okay, would be whatever the energy change is associated with this process right here. We add an electron to the gaseous calcium plus two ion, get the calcium plus one. Now, the opposite of this is not the ionization energy of calcium plus two, because that would make calcium plus three, which is not involved here. But if we just take this reaction, this equation, and flip it around, we get this. What's this process? Well, this process right here, the exact opposite of this, describes the ionization energy for the calcium plus one going to the calcium plus two. So we can say that the change in energy for these two processes are equal in magnitude to each other, but opposite in sign. So the electron affinity of the calcium plus two ion, the first one here, is equal to negative of the ionization energy of the calcium plus one. All right, atomic radius. What do we mean by atomic radius? Well, the radius of an atom. But that's not so trivial to, to measure or to even talk about, because remember, okay, the atom is defined by how far out the electrons go, and the electrons have a, a non-zero probability of going out to infinity, really. But we can, we can do some things. If it's a molecule that forms a diatomic molecule, like bromine, performs Br2, all we have to do, and we can do this, we have the tools, we can measure the distance between the center of the nuclei, actually the average distance between the centers of the nuclei in this molecule. Half of that would be the radius of a bromine atom. If it doesn't happen to form a diatomic like this, well, we, we can get around this by looking at different bond lengths, differences between the centers of the nuclei and different covalent compounds that it forms. We get the same idea. Um, if it's a metal, then we just look at the difference, the distance between the nuclei and the metal and take half of that. But that's what atomic radius is. Now, let's look at the trend in the periodic table. So this table um, shows the atomic radii of some of the elements in the periodic table. And first of all, the trend. The trend is that atomic radius decreases up and to the right in the periodic table. That's a good trend to remember. Um, the basic reason for that is that we know that effective nuclear charge increases up and to the right, and the greater the effective nuclear charge, the tighter the outer electrons are pulled in, and that makes the, the, the atoms smaller. So greater effective nuclear charge means smaller radius.